Right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, I'm Helen, and um, my project is a green ground map. So um, I'm an independent designer, and this started as an independent project, but it has now grown quite a lot. So now it's a good time to kind of um, show what's happened to it. So what is a green ground map? Uh, green ground map is a tube style walking map. Let me just try to put this. Right. So green ground map is a tube style walking map and um, it connects parks and open spaces with green and blue lines. And it was inspired by the um, iconic um, London Underground map by Harry Beck. Uh, but it's also in inspired by the modern maps, modern transport maps. It's just um, a little different in a way that it's not meant for the public transport, it's meant for walking and um, cycling. So it's an organic map and it uh, grew out from the uh, London National Park City moment. Um, it was contributed uh, from the public and it keeps evolving and growing. And the current map has about 380 green spaces, but London has about, um, if we're talking about London, London has about 3000 green spaces. So it's just a bit more than 10% uh, for now. And, and these green spaces are linked or connected with 12 lines. Um, to explore on a bike or on a foot. And also includes outdoor activities like swimming um, or kayaking to inspire people to get outdoors more. Uh, the intention of the Green Ground Map is to, how, uh, is to change how we perceive cities and uh, re-envision uh, re cities through the green infrastructure and active trail networks. Um, the Green Ground Map is mainly for the people who currently may rely on transport maps and just um, have this different visual representation so they can easily um, convert from, from using the transport maps to going to these um, walking maps and, and going out more. Uh -huh. So at first, the, the first map was quite small. It only had about 60 parks. And the idea was related, it's, it was a personal interest. Um, I really like London parks. And um, I lived in London and wherever, whenever I visit in London, I, I would just um, go and find new parks and explore. So these first 60 parks were about the scope I knew, and I had no idea that actually there would be so many. And I started with these, and I proposed this idea, and um, I think it was, um, it got over 380 likes, and many people commented that they love it, it's a brilliant idea, it's a great map, but at the same time, many people asked, but why are so many parks missing? and where is my local park and the whole areas are missing. So I kept um, adding the box because I just wanted to, um, to see it grow as well. And now how it's going is looking like that. It's quite big. Um, it covers the whole greater London area, but it doesn't, I mean, there's 380 parks. It doesn't cover the whole, whole park network, but there's still quite many parks presented. It's quite organic map in a way that it does include some of the recognized uh, walking trails. Uh, for example, there's Thames Path or there's uh, London Loop, uh, the river lines, but at the same time, there's more connections to include more parks. So the, all the parks would have the opportunity to be on the map. 
Um, and I found that growing it organically helps to communi communicate with people. So lots of people will actually get in touch and say, we want to include our blog or would you improve this connection? So it's a, it's a great way to um, also get feedback. It's been quite popular. Um, it has had about uh, 55,000 downloads uh, on my website. Um, I've sold about 750 paper maps. So these are the kind of, they're quite small map, maps, but they include all, uh, they include the map and they include the bark index as well. And about 50 meters of posters. I do also do posters. So people have bought as many posters already. Um, So now I also have the Edinburgh map. So this is the second map. Edinburgh was easier city to work with because it's smaller. It has about, um, right now this map has about 20, uh, 220 parks and open spaces, but there's more uh, obviously. So there's a scope to grow. I'm planning to do eight more cities in 2021. And I also uh, plan to expand the London map now in uh, February and in March. I'm aiming to um, grow it to about 600 bucks and um, include a couple of more lines. Um, so it's pretty basic. If you have used the tube map, you would know how to use the green ground map. Um, there's parks and open spaces are the dots, which normally would be stations. So you would wa uh, walk from park to park and the lines would be walking lines. I uh, mainly intended this for walking or running, you can run also, but you can use the bike, but it doesn't specifically have the bike lines because bike lines don't always go through the parks. Oh, they might, but not all the time. Um, there's icons for activities below and uh, there's a color key so you can find the line you want to explore. Uh, for example, um, you will want to go to the Thames line and you can just um, see all the box on that line. Or um, the south and north are quite wide because um, yeah, there's so many box to connect there. So that's the digital map and the paper map also has a grid. So it would be easier to open it up and look for a specific box and index the box uh, on the opposite side uh, where you can then look up the uh, box you want to go and see it on the, on the, um, on the grid. So it's quite, it's a pocket map. So you can, you know, be on the street, open it up and, and see it, but you can't use it on its own. You have to have Google Maps on the side. So it's based on Google Maps. Yeah, and it, it's a visual tool to um, see, uh, to make uh, seeing this information easier, but you still would need to have this, um, other map engine as well to accompany the green ground map. Uh, what I have learned, um, there's a lot of interest in schematic walking maps because it does make uh, understanding complica complicated visual information easier. And even today, um, the positive news shared this map and so many people have um, got in touch that said they, they love it, they're gonna use it because all these maps are already on the Google map. You can go and, and see them up and look them up. But if you, especially with the big places like London East, if you zoom out, it just all blends together. So um, you can't really well see what's happening on the other side of the city. Um, I think crowdsourcing information is more engaging uh, to communities than a uh, big data project because if people see uh, the map evolving, they want to contribute and they feel that they are engaged and if they can contribute 
box and it appears on the map, they, they feel quite happy about it. Social media is a great way to reach out to people. Uh, and um, also having a two-sided con two conversation, I find is very important with that kind of project because if you, put, if you just put something out there and you don't wait the feedback, it can get quite lonely. But I, I, I really like that people are giving feedback. And some people are critical and that's okay um, because it's not perfect, but it's um, you can learn from what 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 people say and, and make it stronger. A good map prototype can already make a product. You don't have to wait until it's polished to put it out there. And I wasn't ready to put my map out there, but I had to because as many creative people in spring. Um, when COVID started, I didn't really have uh, many projects. So it was a kind of, it pushed me to put it out there and just see what happened. And it had a, quite a slow start, but it really picked up uh, in September because more people wanted to go out and explore this box. Um, keeping project flexible and open to new ideas makes it stronger, which I, which I already said. So if you keep open to different ideas. You don't have to take any everything aboard, but you can still, um, if you listen, there might be ideas that you can use. And, and it just, um, some things just click and they fit with the project. So it's, it's, I think it's um, good to stay on, stay focused, but, but already, uh, but also, um, uh, take aboard a good advice because it's rarely offered. I think a label like envelopes takes a lot of time because this is what I've been doing and all with the paper maps. And I, because as a graphic designer, I usually was a digital designer. So I really didn't have this experience before. And now I know that this is a full time job. Um, Green Ground Map is an unofficial project and a personal project as well, because I'm working at the moment with the cities I know, or I've been, I wouldn't take on the city I haven't been yet. Uh, but it would be great if it, if it would be recognized and promoted as official platform to connect box uh, with the people and the box with each other because it's a big network and it kind of helps to see where you are in this, um, if you're a little box as well, and where you are in the network. Um, collaboration with organizations such as Lam Ramblers, who are um, walkers and who have been doing this long, uh, long um, distance walking for a while, it would help to um, improve the map and make it widely available. Uh, expand the project to the other cities, work together with, um, with other cities to promote and implement these maps. Uh, find the resources and partnerships to grow it into an app, which I think would be quite popular. Um, and I think the best thing would be achieve this uh, through crowdfunding to keep this project still independent. And uh, bro um, I always keep one version of the map free so everybody can have a look before they decide if, if they want to buy it. And about 1% of people uh, buy it right now. And But this open version is available for everyone. And I think it's always should be free and it should um, be reachable by a wider range of people. Um, and that's that's it. So it's hashtag green grow map and, and my contacts and yeah, so the poster looks. So thank you. Thanks a lot, Helen. That's great. Um, I've got a couple of questions come through for you. Um, so somebody asked, um, is the green ground map roughly to scale? Well, it's based on Google map. So it's pretty much well, it is scale um, in a way that 
I do change the locations of the box a little to fit the lines. So it's not, there is a, and, and, and yeah, uh, if you think of a line and, and on the map, you could have an inch long um, line, but it has different distances. And it's because the lines go straight, but the path might actually um, curve around. So it's, it's, a, it's a graphic design layer on top of the Google Maps, put it easier. Okay. Yeah. And I think Hogs. the London map was- Hogs are, yeah, are roughly in the right, they're roughly in the right place. And the relative distances between the points are gonna be visually um, reasonably consistent. Yeah. Okay. Um, Last question was, somebody said, is this a full-time job? It has been, uh, it wasn't meant to be. It started as a volunteer project. <laughs> and I was, I, I wanted to keep it volunteer project. And, um, but because this was the best idea I had really. I just uh, kept um, developing it and uh, and I have a lot of interest in it and a lot of passion in it and I just want to keep it I mean I, I I want to know where all these parks are and I have a feeling I won't tired of it so if I could make it a full-time job then yeah I'd be very happy with that great okay everybody give Helen a big round of applause it's a lovely project And Ed, back to you. Uh, thanks very much, Stephen. Then um, very briefly, I'm going to hand over to Ian, who is going to um, show us off the splash map that the winners will get. Ian, are you there? Yep. Hi. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Dark. Yeah, it's a bit dark. So here on my hands, I, normally my colleague does this. I have a splash map, so a fabric map that we print. Um, Photographic products onto, which is very durable, great for the outdoors. Once everybody's allowed outside again, of course. Um, so the idea is that the winner of whoever's voted for on here, I don't know if I'm doing, if I'm leading the voting. So. No, no, we're doing it on Twitter. Yeah, you joined oh, okay. it's uh, the the poll is now up on Twitter. There's a super long thread about this evening, so please vote in there on Twitter. Yeah. So uh, the winner of that will receive one of these. Um, um, Maybe, maybe we could do stuff with you, Helen. I don't know if, we, if, if that's something that's been spoken about already. Uh, maybe. I, I think it would be a good idea. Guys, yeah. let me, I will post it into the chat. Hang on, let me find the, um, the thread with the, here we go. The AI. Um, anyway, on Twitter, you guys can go ahead and, and vote and we will, um, and the, the poll will run for 24 hours. So whoever wins will get the splash map. So let me, everyone, you can start voting there if you would like. So thanks very much, Helen, and thanks to all of our speakers. Um, so now we're going to um, split off to, to for those who want, uh, split off into breakout rooms and people can hang out there. And thanks for everyone for coming along. And um, if you have a geo project that you'd like to share with the audience, please, um, you know, please get in touch about volunteering at a speech or event. So thanks, everyone.